Michael. <laughs> That's it. He had That's a hat. It. It's all I've got a hat now as well. This is my daughter's well hat. That's quite a look. Yeah, I was going to say, is it your daughter's? It looks, looks tiny. Um, so and so... I would like a helmet that vibrates when David is too close to me. <laughs> <laughs> earlier on about uh, this new show that you two have been doing during lockdown called Staged, uh, which is on BBC One. And it's about two actors who are out of work, but they kind of try and rehearse a play despite being in lockdown with the hope of taking the play to the theatre eventually. So how mm -hmm. did the idea come about then, Michael? Whose brainwave is this? Uh, well, uh, David had enough dirt on me that he could back <laughs> <with> me <laughs> in this with it. It was his idea. Put his point in the other way. I got approached by uh, a producer called Finn Glenn and a writer, director and performer now called Simon Evans, who, who had this idea. And they produced this document that had me and Michael both on it. Uh, and they knew how to get to me, but they didn't know how to get to him. So they came to me <laughs> to get to him. <laughs> well, you guys have got a wonderful... Oh, you've got a, you got a wonderful <laughs> thing going on. We've got a clip here. This is the moment where you guys are talking about the perils, and they are perils, of uh, homeschooling. wait to watch this but the thing that's interesting right is you guys are playing yourselves but it's it's scripted and michael the last time you and i were talking we we're talking about your now legendary performance as chris tarrant in the itv show the quiz uh where Legend it's kind of Chris. obvious what parts of chris tarrant you exaggerate so how do you choose uh, what parts of your own character you're going to exaggerate yeah it's very difficult we were talking about this the other day you sort of have to have someone else tell you what you're like yeah <laughs> so it was quite useful that Simon sort of, in a way, Simon didn't, well, he didn't know me before we started working on it. And so he just had to kind of come up with some, some ideas of like what my character might be like, which was great because I wouldn't know how to play me, really, unless someone else told me what to do. And David, when you look back at, at the work that you've done then on this, are you surprised at how you come across at all? <laughs> Well, it's quite odd. We did, we've been doing a few interviews about this, and the other day, uh, some one journalist was saying to us, well, Michael, obviously you're this rather larger-than-life version, this rather sort of almost monstrous character, and David, you're just playing yourself. I mean, I really <laughs> hope I'm not, because I'm a shambling, pathetic husk of a man in this, which I, I hope is at least a little removed from my real self. But would you guys tell each other... I'm trying, this is, I find this fascinating. Would you guys tell each other if you think the other one's not really being their true self or not playing the best version of themselves? I, I think we sort of... Well, so the way it worked is the scripts are written, but then there are certain moments in it which we just sort of riff around and improvise around. And in those moments, I think we reveal our true selves. Yeah. I mean, at one, point, <laughs> at one point, David just screamed at me, you're a cut price Mike Yarwood! And I just... <laughs> laughed so much that we it was unusable we couldn't use that is it so i think he reveals his true self in our improvised place yes and you know loads of people have been struggling with um working at home doesn't matter what type of job you're doing you know and homeschooling and all the rest of it but for you guys both of you had the family take part it wasn't just you two so how did it work trying to set the cameras up trying to control the kids trying to do some homeschooling on the side i yeah. mean this is something everybody can feel isn't it you know and understand yes well i do i uh, michael is always on that shot you can see right now that's michael through the whole show that's, <laughs> that's all it is <laughs> whereas i'm really in the same place twice because we've got five kids so with me it would always just be expediency where in the house could i hide <laughs> uh, at the point that scene each day. So uh, it, that might look like some kind of meta commentary on uh, my character trying to uh, keep moving or something. It's just because I was hiding from the kids. <laughs> and guys, I've got, to, um, I've got to ask you about something that's been knocking about in the news this week. If I, I'll ask you, Michael, because I, I know, Michael, you're a great champion of, of local and community theatre. And Sam Mendes, the great director, uh, talked this week about how some of the streaming giants like Netflix and Amazon that have got a lot richer recently with yep. us all staying at home how they should contribute some of their enormous wealth to try and support community theatre. What do you think about that idea? I think that's a great idea. I mean, you know, it's all the same community. The actors, you know, certainly in this country especially, you know, we do theatre, we do film, we do television. You know, it's, it's the same pool of people, so we have to pull together as one community and help each other because, you know, I don't think help is coming from anywhere else, to be honest.
quite right. Mm. Quite right. Uh, well, thanks for now. We will catch up very shortly again. Well, we're going to be playing a little game. Thank you, guys. <laughs> right, for many... Now then, uh, Michael and Hello. David, there you are. Now, we've learned that you Hello. two are very good friends, um, but we wanted to know how well you know each other's careers. Uh, so, you've dug out a couple of items from film sets and television sets that you've worked on uh, and we're going to see, with the help of some clues, whether the other can identify which project it's from. Is that you know clear? I mean? You guys get yeah. it? And you've not been cheating, yeah, have you? Yes, you've, not actually, you've not actually texted each other about this in advance, you've not? No! No! Yeah? No! No! <laughs> yeah. Do we believe it? a little bit guilty there, Michael. Um, all right, OK, then. Michael, go on, you're up first. What have you got? OK. <clears throat> right. So this is, as you'll see, an hourglass sand timer. Oh. And it is, I got this in a very interesting gift shop. And as another clue to what, and we've both done this. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, I know. Hamlet. Alas, poor Yorick. Oops, sorry. It is. I got sorry, this from Elsinore Castle gift shop. Sorry. Ah. Did you? I did. Yeah, isn't that amazing? Yes, Hamlet. Oh, so we both lovely. played Hamlet. Yeah. I mean, well, you know, yeah. one good. of us more successfully than the other. Very good, David. You got it right. An easy one to start with there. All right, David. Um, let's see your first item. Right. This is in a, a fancy little box. This is... I don't know. This is quite obscure. I don't know that you're going to get this, but there is a brief reference to it in Staged. So, which Michael was definitely around for, so you ought to know about. You were it. definitely around for I the. Mean, yes. You're in that. Yeah. I don't think you've been in any Richard version the of second. this. Richard the Second. Richard the Second. Oh wow. Wow. He's got it. Did, Very good. Do you think maybe they have been texting each no, other? No, I don't advice. think so. Do a story with this because this was uh, Marissa Richardson, who was Ian Richardson's. Widow, uh, he played Richard II in Stratford, of the Royal Shakespeare Company, in 1974. And because there was another Scotsman playing Richard II, she got in touch and oh. gave me this ring and asked oh. me to wear it in oh, that production. Lovely. So lovely. the next time a Scottish person plays Richard II, this Gorgeous. is yours. All right, Michael, let's have one more. Let's have one more, at least. OK. Um, this is a beautiful book. It's called oh. Folk Tales of All Nations, by F. H. Lee, and it's uh, beautifully bound. Where do you think this I is reckon, from? Dude? I reckon you nicked that off the set of Good Omens. I did. It's from a zero film. <laughs> <laughs> it's from oh. a zero film, which got burnt down at the end of the story, and so we were asked, "Do you want to keep some of the books?" So I, I got a bunch of books from a zero films book. Le yeah. Legally um, obtained, guys. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's great thanks. to chat to you. We were very excited about stage. Great to speak to you guys. Have Thank a nice you. night. Bye. We have had some... What absolute heroes they are. We've had some really lovely and kind messages, for which thank you so much, about us making the long list for the Best Factual Show at the TV Choice Awards. Yes, thank you so much to everybody who has voted so far. And thank you 